Midnight, everybody, and Rainbowthon 2.0 has started. <laughs> and I'm falling asleep because I'm a grandma. Good morning, everybody. I am getting into reading. I'm listening to some music. I have my cup of coffee. And I have my book. So I'm about 100 pages into The Decoding of Lana Morris. Doing really good so far. I'll be listening to The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind on audiobook. And hunting with his father. Even then, the forest was so dangerous. Probably the thing I'm looking most forward to today is watching Beyonce perform at the Super Bowl because I've been listening to Formation nonstop for two days now. I thought I'd show you guys how cute the baby goats are that are behind my house. Look at the two cute baby goats just hanging out with each other, laying on the grass. Hi, little guys. They're so cute. And there's the rest of the gang. Look at the babies. Oh, I can't. Grayson. up there. Is that where you hide to get warmth? Oh god. Come down here. <laughs> Hi buddy. I used to hate this cat, but now I'm okay with it. <laughs> Hi. How's your life been? How was the winter storm? You survived. And this one always, always goes on your back and you get your coat all dirty. Don't put your dirty coat on me. So I'm halfway done with my blue book, The Decoding of Lana Morris. Pretty sunset on, I believe, chapter five of this. And it's Super Bowl time. All right, so end of day one stats. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, 79 pages. Sex in the Heartland, 25 pages. 217 pages for the decoding of Lana Morris. Happy Rainbowthon Day 2! So, I just finished the decoding of Lana Morris, and I feel pretty proud of myself. I guess I was thinking this is basically what happens when you say you're gonna do something and then you accomplish said something. I haven't read a book in two days, you know, a day and a half in a really long time. So now it is onto my green book, Anne of Green Gables. I'm pretty excited to get to this one. Good morning, it is day three. It is actually snowing outside like a lot. Okay, this is all quite funny to me. I'm still not over snow and I've been living here for five months, six months. Okay, y'all, back to the snowstorm I go. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did I think this was a good idea? I just want some chocolate. Walking back, use your old footprints. Oh god, I'm falling. And I got my chocolate. So we're good. Let's go, Shovel. So day three is coming to a close pretty soon, and I'm still reading Anne of Green Gables. I'm maybe a third of the way in, a little bit less than a third of the way in. There is footage outside of them being ejected. Yeah, there is no footage, but it, it, Good morning, it's Rainbowthon day four, and I'm still working on my second book, but I am reading three books at the moment. So far I'm about a third into Anna Green Gables and I did make some headway into Sex in the Heartland today. I'm probably about 50 pages into that one and I'm still listening to the audiobook of The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind and I'm on chapter 8 of that. Hi there, I haven't checked in in a bit and that's probably because the past couple days I haven't really been reading as much. Today I am really going to focus on finishing at least one book. Cold Weekend 2016 begins right now. There you can see better. Puppies out in the snow. He. Hey. 
These icicles are in my way of filming. So today I finished reading The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Basically I did chores all day and that's what I was doing while I was doing chores. I was listening to this. I have about 70 or so pages left of Anne of Green Gables. That will have to be finished tomorrow. So the sun's starting to set. I thought I'd do this as quickly as possible and just wrap up how Rainbow Thon 2.0 went for me. Okay, so let me get my books. I ended up reading 3.25-ish of the four books that I had. The first one that I finished was Decoding of Lana Morris by Laura and Tom McNeil. This book I really actually enjoyed more than I thought that I would. I left like a little caveat that I might have not ended up picking up this book if it ended up being something that I didn't like. This book was so subtle for YA. When I read a lot of YA, what I hate the most is how over the top it is and how uh, like there's nothing left to the imagination and everything is explained. And I understand that's because you're a younger audience and whatnot. But teenagers are smart and they shouldn't just be spoon fed everything. So that's what I really enjoyed about this book. It was subtle, there was things going on in the background. She didn't tell you everything that she was thinking, the main character. I also really, really dug all of the magic realism that was in this book. Exactly what I look for uh, when it comes to anything fantasy related. I'm not a big fantasy reader, so I like things that are grounded in real life. So this book did that wonderfully. It kind of just happened in the background, and like she was aware of it, but it wasn't like oh, we need to get into this world. That was all around good for me. All of the characters in this were very different than what is usual. This girl is in a home with, in a foster home with a lot of special needs kids that she basically takes care of, care of herself. So it was interesting to see all of the different kinds of kids that she was um, living with and it was also very different. You don't really hear about stories about those kids, even though they weren't the main protagonist, but they were still, they had a really big impact in the story. There's kind of one relationship in this. I mean, some of the relationships are, some of them could qualify as abuse, and that should be brought up. One specifically, I didn't really agree with, and I could see how it's realistic when you're in that situation. It was, it was still kind of cringy, but I understood why it was here. It wasn't here just to be a scandalous piece of information. That was just something I wanted to bring up as in something I wasn't that like, yeah, gung-ho about. That's it for Lana Morris. I ended up giving this book 3.5 stars. It was actually much more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. The next book that I read, I mostly listened to audiobook, except for like the last 30 or so pages, and that is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, and this is by William Kenkwamba. I know how to say his name now, um, because they bring it up in the book a lot, and Brian Miller. This book was not what I expected. <laughs> so when I read you guys the synopsis of it in my TBR video, I basically was talking about how it's going to be all about inventions and science and how he um, made this all happen for his village, but it ended up being more so about his life in general in his village village and less than 50% of it was what is actually talked about in the back in the blurb. While his life story is gripping, it's important, and I'm glad that I learned it. I don't know, I just didn't really like that I spent 160 pages learning about said life before we got to what I was looking for when I picked up this book. I read some stuff online that it's kind of like because there's a second author, how much of it is William Kankwamba's story and how much of it is Brian Miller picking out what a typical reader would pick this up for. So are we looking for stories about what it's like living without electricity? Are we looking for 70 pages of famine and sadness? Are we looking for kind of how there's no money to go to school? Like his story when it comes to actually building this was so much more interesting to me. Although I am glad I learned about his life. I don't think that I wanted 160 pages of it and then only getting like 100 pages of him actually building stuff. Really I think his story is an important one and I'm going to leave down below a link to his interview with Jon Stewart from The Daily Show. He was interviewed by Jon Stewart which I thought was really cool. So that's kind of the only thing that I didn't really like about this book is how long it took to get there. One thing that I really wanted to bring up about The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is how much of our lives is left up to the circumstance of 
where we're born and who we're born to. These things are happening across the world. We don't hear stories like that come to us and I wish that they would. It took about four years from when he started building his windmill outside of his house before word reached out with journalists and got to us. Uh, I don't know, like, why did it take so long for such an interesting and important story to get out? I'm really glad that I've made this read diversely thing for this year's resolutions and that I am getting to read stories like this that I don't usually read. I ended up giving this one 3.5 stars as well. The last book that I read was Anna Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. I keep breaking corners of this book and now I don't know where it went. Um, but you can see, this copy is from 1981, and I keep having to tape all parts of it because it keeps breaking. I just broke this piece right now. This book was very different. Just in general, the story arc was very different. There was no real beginning, middle, climax, end. You know, there was not that big, maybe in the last 20 pages that happened, but there wasn't so much so that I could really tell which is the beginning of the story, which is the middle, and which is the end. And that's probably the fact that it was written in 1904 and things were different then when it came to telling stories. The relationships in this book are just very beautiful and different. I loved how much of it was focused on friendships and girl friendships. Ellen Montgomery says that Anne had a genius for friendship and I truly agree with that. I also really liked how in this book you could really see Anne growing. I also, in general, just really enjoyed how big the vocabulary is in this book. You don't read books that are meant for children with words like this anymore. And it might be because these words aren't in use anymore a hundred years later, but I still think it was interesting that I had to keep asking Siri. Siri, define such a word. I will forever love the Anne Marilla relationship, the Anne Matthew relationship, and the Anne Diana relationship. There's just so much beauty in all of it and I don't know, it's just a, quite a nice story and I do understand why it's on so many must-reads for children and people in general and I'm glad that I read it. Uh, I ended up giving this book four stars. The last book that I read that I read probably a quarter of and it's Sex in the Heartland by Beth Bailey and this book I wasn't really pushing myself on to read as much. I have been writing and my pencil just fell out of it and writing and highlighting stuff that I'm finding interesting and important and maybe I'll talk about this book in the future when I actually do finish it. That's about it. So I'm really proud of myself, I have to say, for getting through three books and reading a little bit more of a fourth one. I have not read three books in a week in a really long time, so I'm just proud of myself all around, and I'll give myself that pat on the back. Good job. Let me know how you guys did in Rainbow Thon, if you guys participated, did you guys read how much you were thinking that you were going to, or did you completely fail? If you made a video about it, let me know down below so I can go watch your video because I like seeing how other people um, did in this readathon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye! Well, it was priced at $2.40 and of course I paid half of that because of the half off sale of the sale. So, what? Why is this book selling for $2.40? But, I took it, I bought it, I have it now.